Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another installment of Insecurity. We are at episode 13, and today we want to talk about uh, web scams, phishing emails, spear phishing, any type of online scam that we're seeing along the internet, what you should watch out for, and uh, and how to prevent these attacks from hitting you, and how to protect your family members from this. So again, my name is Haim Cohen, and we're always joined by Tom Webster. Hey, yeah. And where do we want to start first? Well, I, instead of jumping right into the topic, I wanted to discuss kind of a business proposition with you. You see, I'm, I'm a prince. I'm royalty in my country where I come from. And I can send you $200 million, but first I need you to wire me $200 so I can send you the check internationally. And this is just a part of my fortune, but I really need your help because you're going to help verify my princehood in my country. So does this sound like a good idea? Absolutely. I get $200 million. The expected value is just is just astronomical. I shouldn't even think twice about this. Exactly. So and, send your check right now. Oh, and do you have an address, or am I sending it to like a P.O. box? No, no. Send it to a P.O. box. Also, um, it'll go a lot faster if you just give me your bank account number. You won't even have to send a check. I can just I can pull it right out of your account with uh, you know my uh, Bank of Nigeria account. Oh, I mean this Completely sounds completely like, legitimate. This sounds like so. Can I just give you my bank account password and you can just do it all? I don't even have to leave the computer. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And how long will this take? Like a couple hours? Yeah, just a couple hours. Okay. This sounds great, but unfortunately, th this was the big scam, I don't know, about three or four years ago? Yep, and it got so many people. Uh, it's commonly known as the Nigerian print scam. People would get an email. Luckily, most spam filters catch this. Um, it's a guy that emails you and claims to be of some type of royalty. It's usually Nigeria, and he says, hey... You know, I can give you this, but I need something. I need you to either, you know, uh, verify my my priesthood or something or my, my royalty by sending this money to this place, or I can give you a check, but I, I need some money to ship it internationally first or to get out of this weird debt or this odd situation. So if you either provide me your bank account details, I'll get you the money, I promise. And a lot of people fell for this. One of the biggest ways they did it is through Western Union. So you go to Western Union, and how this works is you hand them a bundle of cash. They say, okay, well, where do you want to send it? And the guy will give you a Western Union address. It's not like an email address. It's like a, an internal thing that they use to send money all across the globe. Um, and it's supposed to be that, you know, they type it into their system, and then someone on the other side can go, oh, hey, this is my Western Union address, can I pull my money out? And they go, oh yeah, here, sure. Yeah, it looks like you've got $200 in here. Here you go. And it's an irreversible transaction. It's not like a credit card where you can say, oh my god, I got scammed. Um, instead, Western Union, once you send it, that money's gone. So they got a lot of people with the Nigerian print scam. Um, it, it, actually, it turns out now that Western Union um, they've got big labels, big warning labels at any of their stations saying, are you sending money to someone over the Internet? Be aware of these common scams. And they've got, you know, example emails printed out. It's really awesome. Um, did you ever have, that, that was the big one. Did you ever have a friend in Nigeria? Like go to Nigeria for some, either charity or for work or for anything like that? No. See, I have a friend who actually <laughs> did go to Nigeria, and she would... Com I mean, she never sent me, but she would always prank her boyfriend and her parents by saying, hey, I need some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. There was a uh, a buddy of mine got one of these, and he actually, it's really fun to scam the scammers if you catch on to this. Uh, so my friend would go and uh, say, well, yeah, I can, I can ship you this check. Actually, I can't give you my bank account, but I can ship you some money. I've got it right here. But FedEx wants this. If you if you give me like a prepaid FedEx label, a UPS label, just email it to me. I'll get you the stuff. And the, he ended up tricking this guy into giving him like an all expenses paid 
like a 1-800 number for UPS sort of thing that whatever he slaps this label on will get shipped and the guy will get billed. And so he, like, he took this big box and he filled it with, like, bricks and rocks and anything heavy you can find, slapped the label on it and dropped it off at UPS. The guy ended up getting charged, like, a couple hundred bucks for that shipment and uh, obviously stopped contacting him after that. Well, that's one way to get off uh, <laughs> spam lists. No, but something like I don't know. Where, <clears throat> I don't have a citation for this, but something like two percent of spam actually hits. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very very low number. Spam filters have gotten very very good. Um, if you use Gmail, uh, Yahoo Mail is pretty good. But if you use Gmail or even uh, Outlook.com, um, their spam filters are excellent and. Really, most spam filters are, you know, at the very worst, they're good today. Um, I hardly see any spam at all. I mean, yeah, you're right. I, I've had Gmail now for, I don't know, at least four years, and every once in a while when I get a spam email, usually I get three or four at a time, and I'll say, uh-oh, is something wrong? And then mm -hmm. the next day it all goes away. Yeah, because the filters catch on really quickly. What I get a lot of, and this is not spam, this is more like bacon, where it's something that I sort of want but really don't, is Haim Cohen is a very famous Hebrew name. So apparently there's a lot of Professor Cohens in Israel. So I get a lot of spam from people sending it to the wrong Haim Cohen, and I can't read it because it's in Hebrew. And translate on Gmail doesn't necessarily work all the time. But yeah, yeah. how do you get off the Israeli Groupon <laughs> is beyond me. And I don't know how to do it, so you know That's how to awesome. email me. What? <laughs> That's awesome. So um, like, you have to like, translate it and everything else. But, yeah, spams, spam filtering has gotten really good. So, But the problem there is, and <clears throat> are the, the next set where you're getting uh, some sort of email correspondence from somebody in your address book. Mm -hmm. And so... Can, it can either happen through somebody legitimately spamming or uh, uh, spoofing someone else's address um, like you can make it show up from google.com or you know from ebay.com which happens the ebay one happens a lot um, or or worst case somebody's email got infected uh, someone you know it's running outlook on their home computer and they get a virus that happens a lot well I always love where I email a parent and I get an email, I don't know, a few days later or a year later, randomly, where I don't have the student anymore. And it's like, I'm stuck in London, and I have nothing. Can you wire me $700? Yep. And so the immediate first thing I do is I reply to the, I either find the student or find an email of the parents and say, hey, uh, just FYI, you're, I think something's wrong with your email. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's always good to do that. The uh, the stuck in London or stuck in another country uh, email, please send money. That's another very common scam. The number one way to evade this, and it's a classic story on the internet. There's a grandmother that got this, and it was you know an email that said it was from her grandson. It said, "Grandma, I'm stuck in the UK. Please send me seven hundred dollars." And she was she was at Western Union again. She was at a place where you cannot say, "Oh my God, I got scammed." Please, please give me my money back. They said, look, it's a one-way transaction. We can't do that. Um, but the, the grandma said, okay, hold on. Before I send this money, let me, let me just call him. He might have his phone on him. It says it's broken in the email, but hold on. So she rings up her grandson and, hey, grandma, what's up? How's, how's London? What? I, I'm not in London. I've never been to London. But I just got this email. Oh, Grandma, delete that. Do not send any money. Did you send any money? Please don't send any money. Well, I mean, I look at it as if if I really was desperate for money, I wouldn't email everyone on my contact list. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to hit a, a, a very close family member. But a very close family member would probably already know that you're – uh, what's it called? You're already traveling, which is, if you're not doing that, that's a good idea to it. Just let your family members know that you're traveling <laughs> and not the entire world. But, yeah. but so if there was a problem, at least they know that, hey, this, this could be plausible. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's another very common one. Um, and and you're, you're starting to see a lot of 
unfortunately, with the spam filters getting better, the spammers have to get better because it's a cat and mouse game. So you're starting to see really legitimate emails, like the eBay scams where somebody will take the, the eBay email in perfect grammatical English. It's absolutely perfect in every way. And they'll clone the page, and they'll ship it off, and they'll say, well, hey, we just need the, the tracking number to complete your sale. Um, So-and-so has already sent money into eBay, and the transaction is final. And you're just like, okay, cool, I sold something. And then you ship the item, but it was just the scammer, and he was, he was trying to get you to send the item to a location without paying any money at all. And that happens a lot. Uh, eBay has spent a lot of money, a lot of time, they have a lot of personnel working to fight this type of eBay scam because it happens every day somebody falls for it. Well, I mean, the problem is is that that I have never been scammed like that. But, but people have, and it's so well known that people don't want to go to eBay. For a long time, I just swore off eBay and PayPal saying, Nothing good could come on this. What do I possibly need at a slightly lower cost? I don't want to deal with with people asking me, "Oh, can you send can you send the money to this address and the address and the box to this address or I'm international and everything else and they get a bad rap and it's and it's unfortunate, but if there is a way to make money, people are going to find it. Yep. And so, of course, there's there's always the email scam of, "Hey, you know, I sent you this document. Double click it, please. It don't don't do that unless you're really expecting a document or you really legitimately know somebody was sending you something. Um, it's bad karma just to open up email attachments. Well, what I do with that, or I guess we should segue into next uh, friends sending you email attachments and or IMs or, or anything like that or Facebook links. Facebook likes. So the other thing is people are trying to get, the next scam is people trying to get your social media passwords and hoping that whatever they put there, click here to see something, they, they do it in a way that gets you to click there and hopefully gets you infected with the JavaScript exploit rather than clicking on something. But, but so what I do with that, and this is always a good tip, is to reply to them if you don't know that they're sending it to you and say, what is this? Get some yeah. sort of response from them to say, to say, uh, oh, this is the document you you asked for, or or I don't know what you're talking about. Get some sort of response. As soon as they give you a response, now you know that they're either lying, not that they're lying to, that they're either that they know what they're talking about, or or at least they don't know. And now you can say, oh, you've got scammed. Yep. Yep. It happens a lot where somebody will, you know click a link, some spammer will shoot out a, a mass message on Facebook to a whole bunch of people after friending them and uh, say, hey, look, click on this link. And then they click on the link and they get the Facebook login, username, and password. And like, ah, i got to log in again. So, of course, they don't look at the URL book because it's a face.book.net or it's something like that. It, it's a, a URL that's obviously not facebook.com. Um, they put in their username and password oh no, all of a sudden their account is totally compromised. They start sending out spam without even realizing it, trying to trick people into doing the exact same thing. And it's not that they did it purposefully. They were tricked, and now their account is being used to perpetuate the spam. Um, Facebook had a big problem with this you know, a couple years after it launched when it finally hit critical mass, where the spammers were running rampant throughout messages. They actually had... Um, they had to build a thing where they could take a message template and say, okay, anything that matches this, we're deleting it from everyone's accounts simultaneously because that will stop the spread of this spam. It'll stop people from clicking it and getting rid of their Facebook password. Well, you also have, I think now, you can't put more than one link in a URL. We always try to post the show notes on Facebook, and the first link is to our site, and then we have the show notes underneath, uh, and Facebook a lot of times won't let me, and I have to I have to do some sort of webmaster mojo to get it. But they mm -hmm. don't want for spam for any type of reason. But I mean, it's the best. I'm sure this gets the best hit ratio when a friend of yours sends you a message that says "click here," because we all, we're all known for this. You see a good article, you copy, you paste it into an IM, you paste it into an email. All it is is the link, and that's it. 
And I've had yep. a few times someone say, uh, "What? Uh, what is this? Is this legit?" And I say, "Oh, I should have put some context in there." Yeah. So it, it's just it's. It's just something now, something else to think about. And the best thing, that, and what these people do is they 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 use the leaks from other sites. So you had the the Adobe leak. You had what was the other one recently? LinkedIn. LinkedIn got leaked. Snapchat just got leaked. Yeah, Snapchat. You have that, and now I'm sure your Snapchat password is the same as your Facebook password or your Twitter password. And now you have that problem to worry about, where those social media outlets are getting hacked. And they're not necessarily out to harm you. They're just trying to get people to click on links that will potentially either infect them or make the company money. Right. And uh, that's, honestly, it, it doesn't all have to be getting your Facebook account password. A lot of these scams involve you just clicking a link and you getting you know forwarded to a page that's got 100 ads on it. So you get to the page and it's blam, ads everywhere. Well, guess what? That person just made, you know, 20, 25 cents off of that one click because they loaded so many ads into your eyeballs. Um, and then, you know, they, they just send it to a whole bunch of people, and 15, 20 cents times a million, that's not a small amount of money. That's a whole lot of money. Um, and, and we're starting to see a lot of that. We're starting to see these fake search engines pop up, like when you install a program, it'll install a toolbar, or you'll get malware that'll put in a toolbar and change your search engine to something like, you know, Odyssey Search or Supernet Search or another kind of generic sounding search engine name that just shows Google pages, shows Google search results, but with their ads over top of it. And it's all a scam to make money off of you while degrading your experience and showing you more ads. I mean, and you have it even worse is if, uh, like Yahoo, we heard this uh, probably Monday, the Yahoo ad network got hacked. Not Yahoo yeah. itself, but the ad network. CNN has been victim to this. You go to a site and uh, and you have the problem. I emailed you over the weekend for my... Ah, uh, I knew something was going on. Okay, well... Okay, well, let's start the story again. My uh, my sister got, sent us an email saying, hey, what's this? I'm getting this pop-up on her Android phone, and it's asking her to install something, and she doesn't know where it's from. So I said, well, let just download Lookout. We'll talk about Lookout in a few minutes. Download Lookout, let it run. Maybe you did something without knowing because... You can't, I don't think you can get a JavaScript exploit on an Android phone unless you specifically install something. And yeah, you had the great idea. Point. Well, you had the great idea to say, hey, close out the browser, restart. And what it was is that she had one of her open tabs open that was uh, sending pop-ups every X minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was, hoping you to install this app. And from there, now you're inside, and now you can do whatever you want. Right. And, and a lot of people do that. A lot of people will get, especially I, I hate the, the Android ads, and you see them a lot now, where it starts flashing. says, you have one new message. And you click it, and it says, well, hey, just install this app. And, you know, of course, it wants the ability to call people. It wants the ability to send SMS messages. It wants the ability to read your address book. It, you know, it wants access to every piece of information on your phone. And most people don't read the permissions and they click go and yeah, just you know you just compromised your phone congratulations you just installed malware you installed a spammy app um, and I I don't really want to call it malware you're, you're installing a spammy app um, because most of the time unless you've got actual root level malware most of the time you don't see Android malware specifically you'll see apps with overwrought permissions that can wreak some havoc, um, but calling them malware, at least in the classic sense, I think is giving it a little too much credit. Um, these aren't, most of the time, these aren't actual security exploits. Um, and I know we do have to talk about um, phone scamming, uh, but we'll get to that later. Well, I was going to say, let's take a few minutes and talk about, so... So what do we do as far as on the browser, in our email, and on our phone? I mean, it's I mean it's very simple. We've talked about don't click on links. If it's 
I mean, we don't want to say. I, I hate. To, I hate when people say, "Never ever download any attachment known to man," or "Never right. ever do this," because that's not the case. Or "Never run without a virus scan." It's not the case. Your first line of defense is common sense. And, exactly. And, and the common sense is, look, I haven't run virus scan in ages, just because if if I'm I'm very well aware of what I'm doing. To get infected, you have to almost install something or go to places you shouldn't go. So if somebody says, click here... Not, not necessarily, though. So when Yahoo's ad network got compromised, there were a lot of legitimate websites that gave people malware. Well, it was, wasn't was it like active ex exploits where you had to have IE6 or I, IE installed and right. produce permissions and... But we've we've seen that same sort of thing happen with you know uh, Java zero days for instance. Uh, so it it's not that you know if somebody gets a virus I, I don't want to be perpetuating the idea that if someone gets a virus it's because they were a dumb user because sometimes uh, they were doing everything right and it it just happens. But but you're entirely right. The first line of defense is common sense. If something says you know document.pdf.exe Please do not click it. Please. I mean, anything. Look at the extension. Look at what it's doing. And, I mean, look at the website you're getting it from. If you're installing software, free software, please try and, and do a Google search first. Do a search to oh, see yeah. if, oh, if yeah. it's a virus scan. Go to reputable sites. I mean, if you're going to... If you're going to... Uh, if you're not going to micro, the Microsoft site to download Office or the Amazon site to, to purchase Office, uh, I, would, I would question that. If you're going to, like, superfreegameexes.com, uh, that's, you know, <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't trust anything from there. I, I tell parents the kid, with kids that I always have to go and fix the computers for, it, why would a developer make this game just randomly free and put the servers and all this? What are they getting out of it? Are they mm -hmm. making you? I think. Remember, it was Wild Tangent on the old AIM days. Oh yes. So Very that familiar was, with Wild Tangent. So Wild Tangent was this app that I kept on uninstalling. It would break AIM, and then I would be get fed up and reinstall AIM. A couple days later, Wild Tangent was there. Eventually, it clicked, and I said, "Oh, I have to like, I have to, I can't, I have to do something else." And then I looked, and it was like, "Well, it's not really malware. It really wasn't there, but it wasn't a good thing." Yeah, it's kind of, it's one of the annoyance apps. It's kind of, you know, what we in the business refer to as, you know, bundleware or crapware that, you know, comes with any computer you buy today. It's got a whole bunch of apps. It's a bunch of stuff you really don't want, but you've got to go through it, uninstall it, and occasionally it's a big pain to uninstall it, you know, like Norton, all the Norton free trials that I've had to in, uh, uninstall. Um, awful, awful stuff. And then, so... On your computer, be safe. Look what, I mean, Microsoft finally brought the UAC uh, where you have to, like, give permission every single time it wants to do something. Apple took a better approach and and reduced it, but on OS X Mavericks, you ha it, it defaults it to only the App Store, and or, uh, sorry, it's only the App Store and verified developers. So you have to actually go in and change that if you want to put in... Uh, uh, software from other places anywhere on the internet right and Android does that it automatically checks that you cannot install apps that are not from from the Google Play Store and Apple has the same thing you can only get it from the iTunes store yeah there was a, uh, a security conference I went to and someone was talking about you know the rampant problem with Android malware and they he was overselling it. There there's not a rampant problem. Uh, there are, there are spammy apps. I will admit that. Um, but you know Google cleans those out. Google cleans out the. I mean not necessarily the badly made apps. There's a lot of really badly made apps on the on Google Play. But you know they clean out the the apps that are just designed to send you ads or just designed um, to steal your contacts. And they've been cleaning that up a lot. And as long as you don't check that box that says allow unknown sources, as long as you keep that unchecked, um, you're fine. And even even the guy that was giving the presentation when I brought that up, he, he said, I, I went up to him after the show and I explained this, and he said, no, you're entirely correct. As long as you don't check that box, 
you're safe because basically anything on Google Play is relatively safe. Yeah, most things considered. I will only say that you are 100% right, except in the Amazon App Store. If you're an Amazon App Store person, the first thing they have you do is check that. That's right. And I don't know if you can go back and I think I'm almost positive you can. You can go back and, and check that box back. So you can install the Amazon App Store, do what you need to do, go back to settings, check that box. I think you just need it for the initial download of the Amazon App Store. But that's the only thing you have to watch out for. Right, right. So, I, I mean, some apps, like alternative app stores, they might require that. You know, they might require that on all the time. They might require it on just for the initial install. But you've got to be vigilant, and you've got to say, okay, look, am I allowing too much access to my device here? It, do Am I doing, am I allowing these apps to run rampant? Um, can I lock this down? Well, uh, one thing that I, I did... Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say, uh, if you're installing from an alternate app store, there has to be a reason for it. Because Google right. doesn't charge to be in their app store. Amazon and Google are not the best of friends when it comes to their Android tablet market. So Google says, we're not, we're not blessing you with uh, the open handset alliance, so you can't get the Google Play Store. So Amazon said, fine, we'll make our own. Right, but that was specific to Amazon. I don't know of any others that are that are like that. Um, there's Gitchar. There's a couple different alternative marketplaces out there. Um, they're not too common, but I've seen you know games get released there first and vice versa. Um, but Google Play tends to be once you sign up as a developer, it tends to be really easy to work with. Um, one thing I did want to talk about because it literally just happened um, a couple hours ago. Uh, a person I know sent me an email and said, hey, um, you know, uh, my wife just got this phone call from someone claiming to be from Microsoft. And, you know, is, is this legit? The phone number, I mean, it, it looks like a legit phone number. Um, they told her to run some stuff and she said, hold on, hold on, I'm going to go ask someone first and hung up on them. If you get a call from someone from Microsoft, hang up the phone immediately. Um, because these people are scammers. First of all, Microsoft never calls you. When you call Microsoft, you know how long you spend on hold on average? Okay, Microsoft does not have the time to be calling you. But So the scam is these people call you, they tell you to go to the event viewer, which is always filled with errors, because you know every operating system has errors that are reported. They don't pop up all the time, they just get thrown into the logs, and that's what event viewer will show you. It'll show you all the logs and all the errors from everywhere. They say, look at all these errors in the event viewer. I think your system's corrupted. Go to this website, install this software, and it's only going to cost you $60 to fix it, or you know, some amount of, of money <coughs> to fix it. And it's a scam. It's a company posing as Microsoft. Microsoft has actually started taking legal and, and pursuing criminal action against these people that claim to be from Microsoft. It's completely illegal. It's utterly a scam. And you are installing spyware. I saw a computer that was, uh, you know, part of this uh, this scam, and it was it was one of the worst infected things I've ever seen. It was kind of one of those things where you look at it and you go, no, just wipe it. You you can't recover anything. Just wipe it. Everything is is broken. Um, so if you get a call from Microsoft, hang up the phone. It is never ever legitimate. Well, and same thing with these. Uh... Any type, anytime somebody calls you, the best advice that I can give is say, uh, what company are you from? Oh, you're from uh, Capital One? Hold on. I will call you right back. Yep. Don't ask for their phone number because they'll give you their phone number. Ask for the corporate number. And if it's really that important, you'll be able to get a hold of them. Yep. And that's always the good idea. And any of these late, and then the last one in the last 30 seconds was the, 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 we'll clean your computer. Your computer is filled with stuff. And a lot of those times. Always it, on TV. Yeah. It's a lot of times all they're doing is they're just either rewrapping some sort of useless virus scan. But more importantly, what they're probably doing is installing a toolbar as a wrapper that's going to feed you more ads. Yep. And, and, Again, 
the best thing you can do is back up your computer with with all the files you need that in case you do get bit it's quick to reformat and uh, just regular maintenance and common sense yep and, so. and if you're gonna use an antivirus use something legitimate Microsoft security essentials knob 32 Kaspersky you know what one of the names one of the big names I wouldn't suggest Norton I wouldn't really suggest McAfee but you know Security Essentials works, and it's free. And what I've noticed is most of these virus scans find it after the fact, yeah. rather than before. And after the fact, you still want to reformat your computer because you can't be sure that it's completely gone. Exactly. Anyway, we got to go. Until next week, everybody. See you guys. Bye.